Um, I was thinking of simple. You were talking about it simple. So I thought that if you were to make a poster to put on your wall to remind you every day about the Course in Miracles, and you wanted to put simple statements, what would be the statements that you would put on it in, say, 10 statements or less? <laughs> 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 and this this is yeah. for anybody. You know. I mean, uh, I mean, when I was going through the course, I mean, there was just it was depending on the the flavor of the week, you know, what, what was really jumping out of me. Uh, trust would settle every problem now. Um, some people, somebody who was it? Dennis was telling me he was contemplating a tattoo. And he was sitting at the dinner table saying, I think I might get a tattoo. And he said, I might get it right here on my arm so I can view it. So, uh, <laughs> there was another man there that had one right there too. So, um, forgiveness is the key to happiness. Um, that, that was one that always jumped out. Sometimes, the shorter the better. Uh, Something that's really short, like several words, I rest in God. I remember when I got to that workbook lesson, I stayed with that one for a while, because it was like, oh, I like the sound of that. I could just, ah, just, I rest in God. Um, in the early years, when I was just learning really to trust, all things, you know, would come to me, and uh, I, I think I really opened up to lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. To remember where, where my sustenance, my source was coming from, because as soon as you're tempted into believing into persons and money and jobs and countries and politics and all this, then you lose track of it source, and that's the last thing you want to lose track of, you know. Um, and maybe I'll just stop with, uh, there's a part in the Course, in the workbook, where Jesus says, uh, we say, God is, and then we cease to speak. So, if I had to pick two words, uh, God is might be a, a great reminder, just about presence, the I am presence. And, uh, and, uh, there's so many great ones. I mean, my gosh, we could go on and on and on for, for those, but those are just some of the ones that just popped into mind. Yeah, you know, uh, our main person described that as the absolute truth. God is. You know, the Course says God is, and then we cease to speak, because there are no words to speak them. But it's like the body disappears, we become one with God, and that's the absolute truth. Now, <clears throat> Uh, some people actually criticized that because they said, you know, they, they remember what Deepak Chopra said, oh, if somebody doesn't know the truth, you should follow them. If somebody says that they have the truth, then you should run away from them as fast as possible. So I said that to Arvind Purser, and they said, well, that wouldn't help you very much if you found someone who knew the truth, would it? <laughs> you know, and it's like God is, that is the absolute truth. But there's a second part of that that is unspoken. God is, and nothing else is. It's easy for people to get the first part. God is. It's not so easy for them to get the second part, that nothing else is, and that God is the only truth, that that's the only absolute truth, you know, that you can have. So uh, I would say, you know, focus on that. What's the first part of the question? I forget uh, something else. Oh. I was just making a poster, and I wanted to remind myself of the principles of the course. Okay, of yeah. So what, ten or less things? You know, um, there's one thing that has helped me a great deal lately, and this is especially helpful if you're on the internet. There's a quote from the course that says, "Every response to the ego is a call to war, and the war does deprive you of peace." Yet in this war, there's no point. So I'm literally reacting to something that isn't there. I'm, I'm literally reacting to something that does not exist. And as soon as I remember that, 
on top of it this way. Yeah, so I have actually made up my own conflicts. Uh, I've actually made up these people on the internet that are, you know, I mean, they've been trying to destroy me for years. You know, and it's like, oh my, my God, they're not there. In this world, there is no opponents. You know, they don't exist. And as soon as I remember that, the conflict is over. So that's the one that jumps out at me lately. Anyway, every response to the ego is a call to war, and war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there's no opponent. You know, the place where I've seen that the most, this uh, drawing of Jesus laughing, the places where I've seen that the most have been in unity churches. And we just happen to have one. Cindy, do you know where we got that? Do you remember? I forget. It's, uh, maybe it wasn't a unity church, in the bookstore. Sometimes they'll sell them in the bookstores. And you get this beautiful image of Jesus laughing. And most of them don't have a yeah. caption on the bottom, but our drawing of Jesus does happen to have a caption on the bottom, and he says, you're afraid of what? <laughs> and he's gone through the crucifixion, and, and you're afraid that you can't pay your rent. You know, so it's like, you're afraid of what? And uh, I think it's becoming more and more available. I think it's a good development. I think it's very nice that uh, a lot of people are thinking of Jesus now as being somebody who could laugh, who could have a good time. Because yeah, I've been to places like... Uh, well, I saw a billboard in South Carolina. You know, South Carolina is one of those states that allows billboards. They don't, they don't even allow billboards in Hawaii, but in South Carolina they allow billboards. So we're going down the road, and every mile or so you'll see a billboard for a local church or for Jesus or something like that. A very, very conservative place. And all of a sudden, I saw this billboard, and they got Jesus, and he's hanging on the cross, you know, but he looks angry, like angry Jesus, you know, and he's kind of, he's kind of buffed, you know, kind of muscular, you know, it's like angry, buffed Jesus, and the caption that they have there, the words that they put in his mouth, this is true, you drew first blood, but I'm coming back. It's like Rainbow Jesus. <laughs> and you know, there are a lot of people out there who believe in a literal translation of the Bible. So if you get into like the book of Revelation and stuff like that, all of a sudden you have this completely warped idea of Jesus leading an army on a horse. He's, he's wearing a white robe dripped in blood and stuff like that. And you know, I understand that people believe that, but why? You know, it's like, why does somebody who is obviously all about love and forgiveness have to be portrayed as a warrior who wants to kill his enemies? And that's the difference between The Course of Miracles and the Bible. Both of them present a God that is perfect love. They both say that. They both say that God is perfect love. But A Course of Miracles gives us a God who really is perfect love, which gives us a perfect home to go home to. That's the difference. One is completely uncompromising. Of course, America says there is either a God of love or a God of fear, and it says no compromise in this is possible. So you have to choose one of the two. And that's one of the things I love about the Course, is its uncompromising nature. <laughs> 